Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Ubuntu 1610. Now this is only an interim release for Ubuntu so it'll only be supported for 9 months. The previous version of Ubuntu 1604 was long term support release which is supported for 5 years or more like 4.5 years at this point. So is it worth upgrading to Ubuntu 1610? Uh, no, not really. There's not really much in the way of changes. One of the main changes has been on the graphical interface, it is now slightly faster for older machines and particularly for running in VirtualBox. Well, that's a plus for this video. You've got newer kernel and you've got some newer applications as well. So in terms of being on the bleeding edge, this, that is worth having then. But if you're not that interested being on the bleeding edge, no, again, not really. You've got the option of having Unity 8 in this release. But don't forget, if you want some newer applications and a newer kernel, you can always backport them into Ubuntu 16.04, long-term support. So, okay, with that aside, we're going to take a bit more of a look at it. Ubuntu 16.10 is codenamed Yakety Yak. But the performance is a lot better now in VirtualBox. Now, I know we can't be too critical of it in VirtualBox, because that's not how we're meant to run operating systems permanently. But, uh, yeah, it's just good to see, though. As a full system install, Ubuntu 16.04 was perfectly functional on my system, rapid enough, no criticisms about it, um, well, <laughs> no criticisms about it, <laughs> uh, yeah. The criticisms I have are more that uh, we've seen very little in progress for Unity 7, and yes, why should we? We are, have Unity 8 now, but compared to KDE 5, that is where my criticisms really lie. Look, other desktops have progressed significantly better. This new software centre is excellent now. There's a significant improvement over the old software centre, and this is one we did see in Ubuntu 16.04. Clicking around some of the applications, as we do have reviews, a screenshot, description. These narrow scroll bars, yeah, that's okay. And yeah, got some reviews here easy enough to install. I want to focus more initially on some of the changes rather than just doing a whole these are all the features of Ubuntu. So this is a newer version of Nautilus and I still don't like Nautilus. Honestly it lacks so many features compared to Dolphin and when you look at Nautilus in GNOME Classic that was a lot better. One of the features I should have been more prepared to demonstrate is the opening of zip files how it can be done through Nautilus now rather than going through a, another application. So actually I'm struggling to work out what the differences are in Nautilus now. I think there's other locations, there's a slightly different layout. So if I go across to my NAS, I've got the option of entering a specific server address there. It's functional enough as a file manager. So I'm going to have to log out to show you the next change, uh, which is that Unity 8 is available. Look at the login screen here, we have the option of using Unity 8, so you don't have to opt for a different release of Ubuntu. It is here in the default version, so you've got the option of the two desktops. Unfortunately, Unity 8 will not work in VirtualBox, but it also won't work in NVIDIA, as far as I understand. The mere display drivers aren't compatible yet. So when you try and log into it on a system that isn't compatible yet, uh, it will just chuck you back to the login screen don't really know how I can test it because the only system that doesn't have an NVIDIA graphics card is my NAS and that has an AMD graphics card that's built in on the motherboard and I'm not going to sacrifice my NAS in order to test it out <laughs> funny old thing honestly I'm stuck with what to show you in terms of changes because we've covered it those are the major changes of the system so you can see we have Linux kernel 4.8 but that'll be backported into the long-term support release at some point. In terms of wallpapers that we have on the system, well, I looked at some of these already on the Week of Linux News video. So there's some of the configuration options, we can change the icon size in the launcher. The theme, well, there's only a couple of themes. Behaviour of the launcher. So no easy way of changing the launcher position in the default system utilities going to need something like the Unity Tweak tool in order to adjust that. You can get an idea of how they've improved the system performance here, that there's very little shadow now on the applications. There's only a couple of pixels around two edges. 
obviously gives a slight gain. Unity tweak tool. Into the launcher and can we move it to the bottom here? Mm, position, ah here we go, bottom. So that's two positions that you get, left and bottom. We've got a bit of flexibility now and this feature appeared back in Ubuntu 16.04. Still not as flexible as other desktops though. By default, the Unity Dash is an offline searcher, which allows you to search for applications and files on your system. Files do eventually appear. So I can look into the folder. Yeah, let's open it. That takes me across to the folder. I could have opened the image as well. So opening an image, yeah, responsive enough. You can switch the Unity Dash to an online file searcher by opening up the security and privacy tool and go across to search. Then when including searching in the Dash, then enable this option here, include online search results in the Dash. Now when I search for something, Cardiff, yep. Okay, performance isn't great here, but actually on a real system as well, there's a bit of lag. It's kind of a reason why I kept it off. Cardiff Cabal for partly cloudy tonight, a low of 7 degrees C. Oh, it is getting colder. Oh, I've got rain as well for the weekend. How many of you guys actually leave the online search results on in the dash? Curious to know. In terms of pre-installed applications, well, there aren't that many really. Get uh, a partial suite of LibreOffice. Got Firefox for your web browser. Thunderbird email, software center, nothing much else of real significance though. Well there's not really much else I can talk about with the operating system. It's not really much of a step up from Ubuntu 16.04, the long term support release. There's been very little in terms of progression, it's hardly worth jumping straight to it, I don't believe, because you can backport some of the changes into Ubuntu 16.04. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.